We're building a wild pool system on the top floor of a house, 24 feet deep in the water. We're doing all kinds of fun things, some waterfalls, wet walls. Catch up on the old stuff, follow the new. We love you guys. Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Hey guys, Christmas is right around the corner and I'm bringing it up now because we want to give away more first flights, help people get their license or finish their license that are part way along the way. And to do that, we're selling our shirts, hats, gear, to help people get into aviation. So I just want to throw out a quick reminder, you need to have the orders in by November 5th to be able to get them to you for Christmas. And also on November 6th, I'm shutting down my website to make a few changes. So I will have nothing available to order after November 5th. So if you thought about getting some church scrappy gear, Draco gear, whatever we have for Christmas, please do it now so that we can help get more people their first flight and introduction into aviation. We appreciate it. We love you guys. We have a lot more videos coming house and aircraft. You guys know the drill. Back to work. All right, guys. So now I'm getting ready to waterproof the structural part of the pool, which will then get another part of the pool on top of it, two fully independent sections of concrete. So right now, this wall is 24 inches thick with one inch double map bar in it that's holding up the top of the patio and also acts as the pool it's got the jets, the lights, skimmers, everything built in. I'm taking this Sharpie and I'm drawing down the wall and you can see concrete is guaranteed to crack. But when you get enough rebar in it, it doesn't move so much. The movement starts to go in its width rather than its length. And so you got to look really hard for the crack. So I've been going along um, and there's a couple places I couldn't find it until I got a magnifying glass and hunting for the cracks. But here's a perfect example. And the cracks finally showed up. They're guaranteed to happen. And with 24 inches thick and how small this is, calcium would clog that up if water got past the actual waterproofing layer of the pool, which is not usually intended to be the main structure. It's a backup. The waterproof layer is some kind of a pebble finish or a plaster of something else will be the waterproofing. But I need this to be waterproof multiple layers. So what I'm gonna to do to this structure is I'm gonna take this grinder and I'm gonna cut into this crack that I found about a half inch thick, deep, and a quarter inch wide. And then I'll fill that with a Cicloflex filler that's a waterproof, it's like a cult for concrete. It's unbelievably strong and it's malleable. So it will always stay soft and move. And it'll ensure that if somehow water got behind the waterproof layer of the pool, it can't get through this crack because I don't want it in my house. Now this is not done typically on any pool in the ground because the trace amount that could get through the first layer would be essentially should be zero. And if it did get through that, what could get through the next layer of concrete should be virtually zero with the tiniest little bit of wicking through it over long periods of time on an older pool. So I don't want that to happen if I had barrier breaches in my pool. So we're gonna go ahead and grind this out, fill it with a filler. Then we're gonna go ahead and put on a orange mesh with a bonding layer over top of this that is another waterproofer, but not the normal pool waterproofer. Then I'm gonna pour concrete on this, and right here it's gonna be extra thick, but over the whole pool, we'll get regular pool shot creek that we're gonna go ahead and fill out because this is supposed to be out 18 inches further of a bench and then a back that comes up. So we're gonna have a whole nother layer of concrete. So I'll extend these pipes for that. It will all get rebarred. This floor gets completely rebarred again. And then on top of that concrete is what we'll put the waterproofer. So there'll be waterproof gunite, waterproof with mesh, then 24 inches of wall. We should have no leaks. We're trying along the way. And every time I layer out this process, I do another seal around the pipe so that the pipes are never a leak. And if they were, 
I can count on it being somewhere in a wall for some other reason and I can get to it because all the pipes are interior right behind a two by six sheet rock wall that I can access in an emergency. I'll never have to dig or get in dirt if I had to repair it. So I have a lot of work to do. I'm gonna draw every crack on this pool, grind it out, fill it up, it's back up. Back to it. All right, guys, I finally get to install the elevator shaft. I am letting the elevator company do it. Um, all I had to do was put in the substructure to hold the elevator shaft. They called for two by 12s. I put in some big giant beams. Two by 12s can split. I know it would have been fine. They have plenty of acre points up all the rails. This is the motor that holds it. And for those of you who are wondering, um, most elevators, including this one, they're counterbalanced. If you want to know the basic engineering behind it, this elevator, if you take the weight of the box with, with nobody in it, then you factor how much weight could be in it. This elevator shaft is just about a thousand pounds, so five men. We add about 50% of what the weight, max weight to go in the elevator. So there'd be about 500 pounds of ballast in this, which means if there's no one in the elevator, you're actually overweighted and the elevator's trying to go up and we're pulling it down with the electric motor. But if you put two or three people in it, you almost come to exactly the 500 pound weight. It's the average amount of weight that you would have in the elevator, which means that the motor itself will have almost no draw when you have the average weight in the elevator. So when we have two or three people, this thing is literally just almost moving no weight up or down. And when it's empty, it actually has to pull the elevator down. And if it's overweight and you actually somehow fit a thousand pounds of people in this smaller elevator then you're lifting roughly 500 pounds but it's really cool um, we have a lot of work to do fortunately i don't have to do it i'm just going to watch these guys i did the subframe these guys can install it you guys know the drill back to work Just about ready to pour concrete tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Really excited about it. This right here is actually expanded closed cell foam, high density. We actually had to do it in multiple little lifts. Otherwise, since it's a chemical two-part base, if you tried to fill this clear full of foam all at once, it would literally light on fire. It's too big of a chemical reaction in the middle would get hot. So why I needed to do this foam here instead of framing the pool for this kids play area swim platform is I needed this big beam that's spanning over the entire garage to be tall enough to carry the weight of the pool. So I couldn't step the beam up shallow without having and have the structure I needed to hold all the weight of the water. So the beam coming around this side is nearly two feet thick double mat bar. Then I wanted to get this area to have similar weight as this area full of water. So adding this concrete is much heavier than water. Filling the center with foam offsets it. And now I'm gonna fill this with concrete to this point. There'll be a cold joint here. I'll V shape this and put a rubber membrane sealer between it. You can see this has already been rubber membrane sealed before I did the spray foam. I'll pour concrete to this level, then I'll membrane the seam, and then I'll put another layer of orange grid material and concrete layer over the top of all of it so you don't see the cold joint. That's a next waterproof layer. Then I pour another 10 inches of concrete on top of that. So we end up going waterproof, waterproof, concrete, waterproof, 
seam layer, waterproof main layer, concrete waterproof layer, then concrete cap, and then another layer of the orange mesh mixed in a bond coat, which is a chemical and concrete powder mix resin base. It's not just concrete and water, but it's an actual waterproof layer. So we're gonna have multiple layers. At the bottom of this foam is the, this concrete slab, which is nearly that thick, which has already been waterproof. So there's no way any water is gonna get in here. I'm going a bit overkill. But at the end of the day, when I add up the weight of the concrete and the foam, it's gonna be similar to the weight of everything else that has water. Doesn't need to be, it just worked out that it didn't take much concrete thickness to equalize the weight of the water. Hope that makes sense. This is going to be a swim platform. It'll only have about this much water in it, a little lounge area. There's jets, there's lights. This swim platform will carry across here. We've got more lights, jets. This will be giant arcing round circle stairs that come way out here to come out. And we've got the hot tub over here, 12, 14 people, I don't know. We'll see how many we can squeeze in it. You can see on the pool windows, they're finally installed. You can see the, geo, the mesh grid on there ready. You can see the channel tracks bolted and bonded in. Those windows are two inches thick. I only needed three quarter, an inch and a quarter to be extra safe. I went to two. Those are flush set in. And then when we put the metal frames in, those bolt onto that mesh. And then I can bond coat the waterproofing behind that mesh, add all the other mesh. This whole thing will be orange. Go over top of that, we end up doing all the same layers on the entire pool to get the several layers of waterproofing. So I can't imagine it's going to leak. I've had this bottom thing without any of my waterproofing filled, cleared up with uh, water so many times from rain and storms, never lost a drop. So waterproof time, a lot of work. You guys know the drill. <laughs> Back to work. <laughs> The next step in the pool is getting ready to pour the next layer of concrete over everything. So I've already got the pipes in the wall. Inside the wall, I did an embedded, basically an O-ring mechanically done by making a foam seal. I sealed that. Then I put on one of these layers with epoxy over that seal, close it up tight so it's now all hard as a rock when you get inside here. This is all cured in and the gasket is inside there. Now I'm putting this on again. I'll put this in with a water stop uh, concrete and I'll bond this on. Then I'll put a layer of this again over the whole thing. There'll be a water stop underneath this, a bond coat. Then this goes in the wet bond coat and then while that's still wet, we put another bond coat over top of it um, and close this all off. I've already got a layer of this in the corners. This layer coming down the wall is going to overlap that corner yet again. And then when I do the floor, there'll be another one coming across the floor that will overlap both of those, come back up the wall, which will give me three layers in the corners. And there'll be three layers at all the pipes. After that, I'm going to drill into the wall eight inches into a couple foot thick wall, epoxy and rebar and I'll mechanically bond the next layer of the pool to the structural layer of the pool. So think of this as really strong dirt. Now let's put a pool inside of it. <laughs> then after that, we'll do another layer of this on top of that pool coating. Then we'll put the finished pebble tech or rock finish on top of that. So we have a lot of steps done. We have a lot of steps to go, but this literally is gonna have another wall coming clear out here. There'll be steps coming up this side. You can see we now have this poured inside of here is a solid closed cell foam core. It's waterproofed in rubber on the inside, closed cell foam, waterproof rubber, concrete on top. Then the seam is now bonded. It's all rebarred together. We are gonna put a layer of this over the whole thing. Then this gets folded over, rebarred again, and this gets a cap and this becomes a swim lounge platform. I'll put some big giant circle steps here. So by the time we're all done, 
some of these areas on this pool is going to be oh, almost three feet thick. Um, most of the areas won't be, but the critical structural loads had to be. So we have a lot more work to do. You guys know the drill. Back to work. Starting to prep the next layer of bond coat with a grid mesh between. Do that down all the walls. They're overlapping the corner joint. We'll come across the floor. And when we finish doing the whole pool, then we'll pour our gunite another layer, make our benches, our steps, our caps. We layer everything up one more time. guys what I've done here is when I poured this side of the concrete pool which is actually about that big there's a step for this to land on but when I poured this I added this extra ledge three inches deep half inch wide and then got a radius edge now I'm filling that and what I did is I actually clamped this orange mesh into the two by four so that I could pour this in get the mesh attached then you can see over there, I fold the mesh back through the wet bond coat. It's a glue-based concrete. And that will come all the way over and come past this rubber joint, which is a cold joint that's waterproofed. But this makes another joint over that cold joint. And then I can pull all the wood off I've used to put up this temporary frame. And then I can go down the wall with bond coat to the rest of the orange grid you see. The purpose of that if you ever, ever had a pool where the side started to delam away from the original shot creep of the pool or concrete, I'm wanting to make sure that this mesh is just not going up straight to the edge of the pool and then ever having a chance for that to pull away. So I'm bonding it up and over the top. The reason I left this ledge here is so that when I pour this in and I pull on the mesh, the grid mesh, I can drag it and shake it through the concrete so the mesh actually makes a big radius and the concrete's going through it, the bond coat. That's so that if I ever have to do any little bit of grinding or shaping before I put the tile on, I don't nip or cut this mesh. It's back in the mud. That's really important because if you nick that, then that could be a place if the bond coat started to not stick, it would peel away and that's when you have problems with pools 15 years later, 20 years later. So I'm geogridding my wall to the top of my pool laying tile which will also overlap and clamp in the tile on the wall will be clamped by quartzite granite with an overlap that will grab the tile so it can't pull back so we're just locking everything in so hope that makes sense it's a lot more work but uh, i don't want a problem with this pool ever so i intend this to be my last house and i don't want to ever touch it so back to work guys it's done the edge may look a little messy but it's extremely smooth and flat it's gonna make setting the quartzite tile all the way around it really nice we're gonna do the walls then do the floors then put in the stairs the benches shock creek getting closer back to work overlap ring around the corner securing up got the square structural mesh in that wall you can see we got the orange mesh ready to roll down and it's overlapping about eight inches 
and we'll finish going all the way down to we connect to that. Then we're going to run the floor from this overlap to the overlap on the bottom of these walls. Back to work. up the walls done swim platform done wrap the inside of the hot tub and now we're working our way around the windows first layer on the windows then all the orange ones will drop down and give a second layer full length we're getting close <laughs> 